my name is Abdullah Suleimana. Today we have Mr. Godin Kuwadan from West Africa Center for Peace Studies. Today's topic is on the role of peace organization before, during, and after election. And we'll be looking, we'll be beating our emphasis on the 2024 election as well as what West Africa Center for Peace Studies did during, before, or during, and after the 20. 20 election for this uh, opportunity uh, i think this is a very important topic uh, before i delve into this issue i would like to talk about the west africa center for peace studies uh, the west africa center for peace studies is uh, an international non-governmental organization we are non-partisan we are advocacy based we are research based and uh, it's an organization that wants to use peaceful uh, methods to promote the uh, development of Africa. The organization has a global headquarters in Virginia, USA, and uh, in uh, West Africa, we are based in Accra, Ghana. Uh, our vision is to promote peace and uh, to enhance development in an, uh, on a continent uh, that is uh, devoid of conflicts and uh, devoid of uh, uh, all these things that we are seeing happening around us. We want to have a continent where uh, people are living in peace and going about their duties. First question is, people, people think when it comes to Ghana here, we are enjoying peace. Is that true? Thank you very much. Yeah, that perception is uh, all over the place. People think that once we are not having conflict like uh, our neighboring countries, uh, it means we are enjoying peace. Uh, peace, we have uh, two types of uh, definitions. We have a negative peace and we have positive peace. Uh, when we talk of um, uh, negative peace, it means uh, where we are having open conflicts, we are seeing all sorts of things. Uh, and um, we also have the positive piece where things are looking normal, everything is uh, looking good. And but most countries don't, cannot say that they have one uh, absolutely. It's always uh, a mixture of the two. In Ghana, we are fortunate that um, we don't have an open confrontation. Uh, we've been able to manage our disagreements well. And so, yes, we can say that we have peace, but that peace, we need to preserve it. We need to work at it so that it will be sustained and then uh, will be lasting. Mr. Godwin, so let's go back to the 2020 elections. Can you please give us some of the activities that the West Africa Center for Peace took. Yes, we all know the 2020 elections were very crucial. Uh, a lot of things were at stake. You saw the activities of uh, the political parties. And uh, we, at the West Africa Center for Peace Studies, uh, we have what we call uh, early warning system that we use to monitor the atmosphere before, during, and after the elections. And so, according to our research, we saw that uh, previous elections gave us the indication that if uh, care was not taken, we could also go the way of our neighboring countries, like what happened in Cote d'Ivoire, where elections the results were disputed, and then uh, it turned violent. And so we took the preemptive step by organizing a program called Peace Begins With You. We went to so many places, especially the FBOs, faith-based organizations, the churches, the mosques, and the other organizations, especially the youths. They were our target because uh, the political parties mostly used them to carry out their plans. And so we went around the country talking to them about the consequences of uh, violence and the importance of peace. So that was our contribution to 
promoting sustainable peace during the 2020 elections. You, the SWAPs have a benchmark whereby they are able to assess the level of the activities you took in the 2020 to, let's say, to, to be able to tell whether they really succeeded in the campaign that you took or relatively did not succeed in the campaign that you took. Is there any benchmark? The West Africa Center for Peace Studies has its own monitoring mechanism in place to assess the impact of our campaign or activities. Uh, before the 2020 elections, the Ghana Police Service, for instance, uh, has um, a list of uh, places that are called hotspots. These are trouble areas, areas where violence will easily erupt. And therefore, in our campaign, we also uh, targeted some of these hotspots and uh, preached the message of peace to them. And when we compare the activities that preceded previous elections and what happened during the uh, 2020 elections, you could see there was a far much improvement. Uh, the youths were more peaceful. The turning out was high, and people behaved during, uh, before, during, and after the elections. And uh, that was uh, a plus for democracy and a plus to Ghanaians. So what's the overall take on the role of the peace organization that we have in Ghana in promoting peace during and after our elections. Yes, the role of uh, peace organizations such as the West Africa Center for Peace Studies and other uh, NGOs cannot be underestimated. Uh, we must come uh, to the point where we realize that our contribution to the sustainability of peace is very crucial. Uh, we must not be firefighters. We should not wait for crisis to erupt before we come on board. And so I can say that despite the challenges, financial and uh, other logis logistical challenges, uh, the peace organizations are doing a lot and at this juncture, I would like to salute the National Peace Council, who have been playing a, a pivotal role. Uh, so there are so many things that can still be done, but so far, the peace organizations have played a significant role, even though most of us are working under serious challenges. So with the 2024 elections coming up, what are some of the activities that West Africa Center for Peace Studies have in place in promoting peace during and after the elections? Yes, we are always uh, aware that it's always important to draw people's attention to the importance of the promotion and the sustainability of peace. And we always want to take a preemptive step by engaging people early enough so that we don't wait uh, during the election period before we talk about peace. Because at that time, when the political activities are ongoing, a lot of people are involved in their partisan activities and might not listen uh, the way they are supposed to. So we have uh, put up a program. We'll be moving from region to region, uh, as we did during the previous elections, to conscientize people, to draw people's attention about the importance of preserving the peace that we are enjoying. And we are looking forward to working with other peace organizations as well to promote peace before, during, and after the 2024 elections. Godwin, you've been in Ghana for quite some time and you've experienced, let me say, a couple of elections. So, 
let's start from 2000 up to 20 the last election that we had can you read them in terms of how peaceful those elections were yes the elections there have been an improvement and there are times to there are some setbacks uh, we need to be consistent in our improvement when we look at uh, the previous elections uh, let's take it from uh, the 2000 uh, <clears throat> we uh, saw uh, the enthusiasm a lot of uh, willingness uh, people were excited that our democracy was growing and so the participation was also uh, going up but with time sometimes we could see voter apathy we see people saying that they are not satisfied with the performance of a particular government and therefore their participation is linked to the economic affairs at that time and so it's been like that for subsequent years and so we could see there are years you see a lot of people participating and there are other years too uh, the voter turnout uh, seems to be uh, going down but overall you could see that uh, people are interested in democracy so far we have tried different types of uh, governance systems but democracy even though it has challenges we believe that that is uh, better even though there are so many things we need to do to improve it uh, from time to time so that every election will only get better west africa center for peace studies has been doing to promote the peace ghana has been enjoying during and after election so i just want to take your view on this what do you think the government of ghana in other words the electoral commission can do to add on to the peace that ghana has been enjoying over the years when it comes to its electoral yes the electoral process involves a lot of stakeholders and I think it's not only the Electoral Commission that has a role to play in ensuring peace. All the other stakeholders, the political parties, the government, uh, the citizenry, and um, our neighbors, we all have a role to play. And so the, the flaws or the challenges that were faced during the last elections, the 2020 elections, I think uh, we've all learned from those challenges and there should just be an improvement, the delivery of the electoral materials on time, uh, the education uh, that is normally organized uh, prior to elections, uh, the, um, the role political parties must also play in uh, educating their supporters and members must also improve and the citizens must also uh, learn from past uh, actions and also be involved but be peace-loving citizens, law-abiding citizens so that the process can only get better as we move forward. Thank you. Uh, Farijan once said that there is nothing like free and fair elections. What are your views on such statement, please? Uh, Dr. Farijan is uh, right. Uh, we all know he's uh, pedigree. We know his uh, reputation. We know what he's uh, contributed to the electoral process in Ghana. 
and uh, he's talking from experience. Yes, uh, on the day of the elections, on a, or election day, sometimes all the plans, all the measures put in place, there could be other minor challenges that could um, delay the process or create some um, discomfort for uh, the voters. And so, but despite all those things, the willingness of the stakeholders to follow the process uh, with the goodwill, with the commitment to promoting democracy, to make us get closer to free and fair elections. And when the factors that people challenge or have issues with are not uh, uh, willingly put in place to frustrate the process. So the elections everywhere might have some challenges, but it is our attitude, our willingness, our readiness to make it better that can get us closer to free and fair elections. Uh, Dr. Farijan is uh, right. Uh, we all know his uh, pedigree, we know his uh, reputation, we know what he's uh, contributed to the electoral process in Ghana. And uh, he's talking from experience. Yes, uh, on the day of the elections, on a, or election day, sometimes all the plans, all the measures put in place, there could be other minor challenges that could um, delay the process or create some um, discomfort for uh, the voters. And so, but despite all those things, the willingness of the stakeholders to follow the process uh, with the goodwill, with the commitment to promoting democracy, to make us get closer to free and fair elections. And when the factors that people challenge or have issues with are not uh, uh, willingly put in place to frustrate the process. So the elections everywhere might have some challenges, but it is our attitude, our willingness, our readiness to make it better that can get us closer to free and fair elections. For joining us on today's episode, which was on the role of peace organization in promoting peace before, during, and after election. We hosted the West Africa Center for Peace Studies in today's discussion. Kindly join us again, God will on the 28th of May, 2023, as we come your way with another exciting and insightful episode. Until then, peace. Oh, <laughs>